Hey guys, good morning. So our pepper pot is bubbling away and now we're going to make our starter for our plat bread. First, we're gonna need one cup warm water. Make sure it's warm, nice. Two teaspoons of brown sugar. And I like to use two teaspoons of flour. What we're making here is food for the yeast. We're trying to wake it up. And as you know, nothing brings family to your house like food, right? So we're trying to bring it to the party. And you're gonna need two tablespoons of yeast, uh, dry active. I have the packets here, which is the equivalent of that. Let me just grab a knife. And um, this is just the starter. So with this starter, you can make your Solara bread or um, tennis roll. It's the same starter for all of the um, kind of traditional Guyanese bread. So now we're going to cover it down with the towel. You can damp the towel if you like. Some people do that, but um, just as long as it's covered and put in a warm spot. And I like to put it next to the pepper pot on the stove. So my pepper pot's boiling right now and I'm going to put it over there and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so now I have seven cups of flour, one cup of warm milk, one teaspoon of salt, one cup of sugar, and one cup of butter. This is gonna be a milky, sweet, buttery bread. And making a little space here for where I'm gonna put my liquid. First of all, I'm going to dissolve the sugar into the milk. Okay, I'm gonna give that a little stir. Now, um, my grandma always used aniseed um, in her bread. It's optional. I don't put it, but sometimes, you know, if I'm in the mood, I will. In this recipe, I won't be putting it. Um, but if you wanted to put the aniseed, you'd put it in at this point, okay? Then I'm going to add the salt to the milk dissolve it and I'm going to get my starter let's see what happened to it so you can see the yeast did come to the party and it's very very alive okay first I'm gonna pour <clears throat> the yeast into the center of the bowl Try to get it all out there. Remember, we don't waste. And then I'm going to add the milk and the sugar and the salt mixture. Now you don't need a mixer for this. I like to do it by hand. There's nothing more satisfying than making bread. So I like to do it with my hand. This is butter. There are some recipes that, you know, you have to knead for like 10 minutes and then I definitely get out the dough hook and the KitchenAid mixer. But for this, just some good old hand love is good. So now I'm going to bring everything together. And the making the well is a good idea because it helps to incorporate everything evenly. And we're gonna try now to mix this to a clean bowl stage. Um, when I say clean bowl, that means all the edges, see, will be clean. That way you know you have enough liquid, you have enough flour. And you're just bringing it together loosely, not too tight or, you know, 
you want the dough to be soft to the touch. If you find your dough is firm and hard, then you need to add more liquid. And, you know, making bread in different parts of the world, different uh, altitudes is also affecting the liquid and the moisture. So you might have to find that you might want to add more flour or you might want to add more um, liquid. So my dough's pretty much come together now. Okay, and you can see my bowl is pretty clean. I feel like it's a little sticky on the bottom, so I'm just gonna grab a little handful of flour. That's like not even a teaspoon. And I'm gonna bring it on the counter now. set the bowl aside and then I'm just going to incorporate it all it's not too much kneading right now just want to bring everything together that's the main reason make a little ball and then if I have a little bit more butter in the, the dish I'm going to bring it rub it back into the bowl so it becomes like non-stick put the dough back in and this towel I'm going to wet it now I'm going to put this in a window or a warm spot right now because my pepper pot is boiling I'm going to leave it there and in about 30 to 40 minutes, once it's doubled in size, we're gonna punch it down and make our flatbread. Okay guys, so our dough has been growing. As you can see, it's doubled in size. Um, now I'm just going to punch it down proofed really nicely and I'm going to put it on the counter. I put my bowl to wash now. I won't be needing it anymore. So now I'm going to cut it into four parts. I'm gonna make four bread, or I could make two big ones, okay? But just imagine this piece will double in size, okay? Always keep that in mind because you're gonna proof it again before we bake, okay? I don't know um, how you're planning to enjoy this bread, but um, you know, the first time it comes out the oven, nice dollop of salted butter. That's my favorite. Another reason I don't make this bread the night before is all of a sudden, once the bread is baking and the pepper pot's not done, I notice people going into the fridge and getting their cheese ready, <laughs> getting their jam ready. And then, you know, by Christmas morning or the morning, there's no bread to be eaten with the pepper pot. So it's safe for me to um, make it the day of. And the smell of bread out of the oven is just fabulous. So. This is why I do it this way. So I'm gonna cut it into three parts. Okay. 
and then we're going to work all the air out. You're gonna see it feels kind of hollow and you're just gonna continue to work it like this until we have fairly, just double your finger size. And as you make it, different sizes require, you know, a little, the dough to be a little thicker. It's all about the flavor, guys. I mean, ultimately, the flavor of this bread, the butteriness, it'll be soft and milky. I think this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna add it to this. And then I'll roll this back out again. Trial and error. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't just make this bread for Christmas time. Um, sometimes if I want some dinner rolls, I'll use that, this dough. It's very quick. Another way people cheat the system is they proof the bread in the oven. And then instead of the bread proofing for 45 minutes, it'll proof in the oven for 15, 20 minutes. It'll be already doubled in size. So entirely up to you. I mean, when I'm in a rush, I proof it in the oven. So here we have our bread. Okay, now I'm going to braid it. And you wanna braid it a little bit tight. Okay, and then you tuck in the bottom. Flip it around. Just pulling on it a little, right? If you find your, your dough breaks, just pinch it back together. It's very forgiving. And there, got my pan ready. I'm gonna give it enough room that it can double, okay? Without touching the other bread. And I'm gonna go ahead and braid the rest and then we will come back to do the second proofing and start the baking process. So I decided to make one big one. And as I said, this is very fluid, guys. You can change your mind. You can make some dinner rolls. This is a great activity to do with the kids. If my nieces were here, I'd have to give them their own little dough and uh, they would bake that off for themselves. Okay, so you can see here we have a nice long one and it's gonna double in size. I'm gonna put it to proof. And uh, again, you can put it to proof in the oven, turn the oven on to 170, then turn it off, cover it with a warm, wet towel and let it proof in the oven. You don't have to cover it, it's entirely up to you, but I prefer to cover it. You can even um, get a squeeze bottle with some water and squeeze it into the, spray it into the oven. That creates a humid atmosphere and uh, it'll proof really nicely. Okay, so let's let it proof and we'll be back shortly. Hey guys, we're still doing the bread video. I just wanted to also let you know, as your bread is proofing, please put your oven to 350. So by the time your bread is proofed, the oven would be nice and hot. Okay, I'm just getting ready for our next video, which is ginger beer. And after that, I will be doing sorrel. So we have the whole holiday covered. Okay, so set your ovens to 350 while the bread proofs about 40 minutes. If you wanted to proof it in the oven at 170, you could, and that proofing process would take 20 minutes. It's almost time, guys. First, we have to bake our bread. So you can see my bread has doubled in size. 
and it will again in the fr in the not the fridge but the oven um, once I place it in there it will grow a bit more for the last stage of um, preparing the bread for the oven I like to brush it with a little bit of milk because it still proofs for the first I would say three four minutes that it's in the oven so having that little bit of moisture helps it to grow a little bit more also the milk gives it a nice little shine if you don't want to use milk in this recipe you can definitely omit the milk and use water but the milk gives the bread a richness you could um, use coconut milk if you felt like you know if you're lactose or whatever um, you can use that you can use almond milk but the almond milk might give it a nice flavor too okay so now that i'm brushing these as soon as the oven reaches temperature 350 again if you're in an altitude and you know that you need to put it higher or lower if your altitude changes then go ahead and do that or if your oven you know cooks really fast then put it at a lower temperature because you want the bread to develop again for a third time before you start to get color on it you wouldn't want the bread to brown on the outside and be gummy or gooey in the middle so I have a convection oven and you know with the air moving around I find 350 sometimes even 345 if I really don't want it to be brown so between 340 and 350 you should be safe and this is just like maybe four tablespoons of milk for this amount and as the bread absorbs the milk I just keep putting more it will event eventually evaporate if there's any excess if you see any excess down here don't worry about it it will evaporate okay and then the second thing you need for the finishing process is some melted butter so once my bread is finished baking and it's reached the desired color I like it a golden brown I'll brush it with the butter and then cover it down with the cloth once it cools about 10 minutes you're free to then cut it if you cut the bread right away as it comes out of the oven it will um, shrink and become pasty so you have to let the bread come to um, a cooler temperature not for long 10 minutes and uh, then it would be ready to put your butter on it or have it with your pepper pot whatever it is you choose to enjoy your bread with okay let's get it ready for the oven so I've decided to set my oven at 345 because I do have that bigger one and I would like it to have the time to cook um, another little trick I like to do is to just add some more moisture just for the first couple minutes so the bread can proof a little bit more if it needs to. And we'll see you back in about 15 minutes. We'll check on the bread. But you'll know it's done by the smell of the kitchen. I know the bread is almost ready and not because the house smells amazing, but because people have started to take out their cheese and their butter to get ready. <laughs> Oh, look at that beautiful color. I'm gonna take this out now and then we can have a look at it. Wow, guys, they look beautiful. They're quite big. You can see. And they've got a great color on the top and soft to the touch on the inner parts. You can see that it 
kind of goes in quite a bit. Now to finish it off, we're gonna brush the top with the melted butter. Okay, just gives it a nice glaze and flavor. You can use salted butter for the top here if you like. Um, doesn't, you know, matter. Just a, based on your flavor and how much salt intake you want. But I'm just using a non-salted butter here. Guys, I wish you could smell this. Somebody needs to come up with a way to make people have smell-o-vision. It's beautiful. And the pepper pot's all ready. So I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes now for the final stage. See, they're rustling in the fridge, getting their cheese and jam ready. <laughs> but we have to be patient for 10 more minutes. I thank you for watching this video today. I hope you're gonna make this for your family. Again, you don't need to just make this around the holidays. This is good anytime, you know, as on, you can make it on the weekend, you can use this for sandwiches, you can use it for having with soups. Again, you can use the same dough to make dinner rolls. It's entirely, the possibilities are endless. This dough also makes a great Solara. So if you're loving Solara, you would make this dough and mix your sugar and your, um, maybe we'll do a Solara video one day. Uh, mix your sugar and your grated coconut and you would just roll it up inside and you would proof it again in the oven or on the counter. And then once it's proofed, you would put on the oven and again, brush it with milk, same process basically. Okay, I thank you again for watching. Wish you all a wonderful day. God bless you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my video. That's soft there, right? Oh, let's see. Nice. So that second proofing in the oven by adding that water while the bread gets up to the temperature ensures that the inside will be well developed and also letting it sit for the 10 minutes as hard as it is. Enjoy your bread guys. Thanks again for watching.